Hey everybody. Today we're talking about Bernoulli trials and the binomial distribution. A Bernoulli trial is a very simple sort of probability experiment in which you have exactly two outcomes, traditionally called success and failure. Now, a probability experiment like this is going to be completely defined by the probability of getting a success. We'll denote that with a lowercase p. Here's some examples. Flip a coin and consider a head to be a success. So p is 1 half. Draw a card from a standard 52 card deck and consider an ace to be a success. There are four aces, so p is 4 over 52, or 1 in 13. Suppose 40% of American voters approve of their president. Pick a voter at random. P is 0.4 here, so we're considering it to be a success if we select a voter who approves of the president. Now this is a good time to mention success and failure here are technical terms here, not political statements. We aren't considering whether we personally approve of the president or not. We can view a Bernoulli trial as a discrete random variable by encoding success as 1 and failure as 0. If we do that, we get a very simple probability distribution. x can be 0 or 1, the probability of getting a 1 is p, and the probability of getting a 0 is 1 minus p, because 0 and 1 are complementary events here. Now we can compute an expected value. The expected value of x here is going to be the sum of x times p of x, where um, the sum is taken over the possible value over all the possible values of x. Simplifying that down, we get p. The expected value of this random variable is the same as the probability of success on a trial. Similarly, we can compute the variance. We take the sum of x minus the expected value squared times p of x over all the possible values of x. Simplifying the result, we get a variance of p times 1 minus p. This means that the standard deviation for a Bernoulli trial is going to be the square root of p times 1 minus p. Frequently, we do Bernoulli trials over and over and over again. For instance, flip a coin 100 times and count the number of heads. Draw a card from a standard deck 50 times with replacement and count the number of times an ace is drawn. Contact 750 American voters at random and count how many approve of the President of the United States. The total number of successes in n identical independent Bernoulli trials is a discrete random variable, and it can take values from 0 to n. We're doing n trials and counting the number of successes. Of course, not all of those values from 0 to n are equally likely. The binomial distribution, typically abbreviated b parenthesis n comma p, is the discrete probability distribution for such a random variable. When we have n identical independent Bernoulli trials, each with success probability of success p, and we're counting the total number of successes. Here's an example. A fair coin is flipped three times. Let x be the number of heads. So we're going to flip the coin three times and count the number of successes, the number of heads. Here, we're looking at b of 3 comma 0.5. Three trials, probability of success of 0.5 in every trial. Let's compute this directly. The sample space consists of eight possible outcomes, things like heads, 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 and head, heads, heads, tails. So, looking at this, we see that there is exactly one outcome out of the eight where we have zero heads, um, three outcomes where we have one head, two outcomes where we have, I'm sorry, three outcomes where we have two heads, and one outcome where we have three heads. So, we get this discrete probability distribution. This is b of 3 comma 0.5. So when n starts to get larger, bigger than 2 or 3, this becomes a real pain to do by hand. We'd like to have a more general way that will save us some work. So we want to compute the probability that x is equal to any k when x has the distribution b of n comma p. Here we expect k to be somewhere between 0 and n, inclusive. To start, notice that there are n choose k ways of getting exactly k successes in n trials, where k is between 0 and n. Each one of those orderings 
consists of a particular ordering of k successes and n minus k failures. So the probability of success is p, so we need a factor of p to the k to have k successes. The probability of failure is 1 minus p, so we need um, 1 minus p to the n minus k to get the probability of n minus k failures. Overall, the probability of k successes in n trials is n choose k times p to the k times 1 minus p to the n minus k. This is how we compute probabilities in the binomial distribution. Here's an example. A basketball player makes 78% of her free throws on average. And here we're going to view her taking a free throw as a probability experiment, assuming that it really is random whether she makes the shot or not. If she shoots 10 times, what's the probability that she makes exactly 8 shots? That she makes at least 8 shots? So plugging into our formula when, the when we're looking for the probability that x equals 8, we're doing n equals 10 and k equals 8, p equals 0.78. So we're getting 10 choose 8 times 0.78 to the 8th times 0.22 squared. Simplifying that, we get 0.298. To do the probability that x is greater than or equal to 8, that she makes at least 8 shots, we're going to add up the probabilities that she makes 8 shots, 9 shots, and 10 shots, like so. Simplifying that all out, we get that the probability that she makes at least eight shots is about 61.7%. A random variable x with a binomial distribution is just a sum of Bernoulli trials, each of which we know has mean p and variance 1 minus p. So we ought to be able to compute the mean and variance of x without too much trouble. We get that the mean of a variable x that has a binomial distribution is n times p, and the variance of a random variable x with a binomial distribution b of n comma p is n times p times 1 minus p. That means that the standard deviation is the square root of n p times, n times 1 minus p. Looking at that basketball player again, who's shooting 10 shots with probability of success 0 0.78, I'm sorry, uh, 0 0.78 each time, we get an expected value of 7.8 and a standard deviation of 1.3. As with any discrete random variable, we can construct probability histograms for binomial distributions. Still sticking with that basketball player who has a probability of success of 0 0.78 and is shooting 10 shots, we get this probability histogram. We get a bar for every x value between 0 and 10, and the height of that bar is going to correspond to the probability that she makes that number of shots in the 10 attempts. So for example, here we can see that the probability that she'll make 8 shots is going to be around 0 0.3.